Today is going to be all about rod and reel maintenance in the off season and also some tackle storage tips. And it starts with this little guy right here, the cotton swab. That's all coming up right now on Live to Fish. Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to Live to Fish. And if you're new to the channel, please do me a favor. Consider hitting that subscribe button, smash that like, and don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you know when Live to Fish puts out new videos. Okay, so all of us aren't so lucky to live in a climate where we can fish 365 days a year. The transition between fall to winter means we're packing up our gear and we basically sit in hibernation fishing mode until next spring. No one likes to pack up their gear, but it's something you have to do. But when you do pack up your gear, you need to make sure that you maintain it properly. I'm going to share with you some storage tips for your fishing gear that helps you maintain your equipment. Okay, to start it off, let's take a look at the reels. Now, this is the PC Fun Spark BFS bait casting reel. It's the uh, same model, in fact, that uh, June T Outdoors won from the 500 subscriber giveaway. And what we're going to do with bait casters right off the bat, the first thing we're going to do is take that star drag and we're going to loosen it all the way up. You want to make sure that this thing's loosened up so that those gears aren't engaged and the tension is released. And speaking of tension, you're going to take that tension knob and you're going to open that up all the way as well. You're going to make sure that the tension is released from the spool. Okay, so flipping this around, we're going to take a look at the braking system. You're going to take the braking system and make sure that that is opened up all the way. Now, if you remember one thing from this video, remember this. If you do release all the tension on your reel, you need to make sure that you reset it at the beginning of the spring. If you don't, you're going to be launching your lure into orbit. And along with that, you're probably going to have to re-spool your reel if you haven't so already, because the bird's nest is pretty much going to be huge. So just like daylight savings times where you fall back and spring ahead, well, you're going to loosen up in the fall and tighten up in the spring. Now, I'm not going to go in-depth onto the reel itself and as far as the lubrication of oil and the um, addition of any additional grease to the bearings, because that's something that's specific to each manufacturer, and uh, that's something that's a little more in-depth that I wanted to cover in this video. But what I will tell you is it's a good idea to pop that spool out and make sure that you clean up any debris with your cotton swab. It also doesn't hurt to put a light coat of oil on that cotton swab and kind of move it around inside there and coat the surfaces. Now, let's take a look at another use for the cotton swab on the rod. Now the rod is an often overlooked maintenance item that uh, you really need to take care of. Now as far as the eyelets, they're going to acquire all kinds of gunk and especially out here in the Midwest, if you get any cottonwood or things like that, you're going to get some gummy buildup um, on the eyelets that sometimes you can't necessarily see, but you'll be able to get it with the cotton swab. Now what I do is I take the cotton swab and I run it through each eyelet, kind of rotating it, rolling it back and forth, and cleaning each eyelet as I go all the way along the rod. Now, one of the most important eyelets in this cleaning process is going to be the top eyelet. And that's the one that's probably gonna be either dragged or hit along the, the ground at some point during your fishing outings. Um, this one takes probably the most abuse. And what you wanna make sure is there's no chips, no cracks, um, no breaks, and uh, no barriers for your line as it runs through there. Now, this is gonna be the smallest eyelet. And when you go ahead and push that cotton swab through there, and you're doing your cleaning, you're going to know if there's any defects because any defects are going to catch just like they would on your line. They're going to snag on this cotton swab and you're going to see the little fibers hanging from the uh, from the eyelet. So you want to make sure you give that a thorough go through. If you don't, and if you have any cracks or any defects in the eyelet, what you're going to end up with is broken line, snap casts, and uh, a lot of headaches. So that's it for the quick tips on the rod and reel maintenance. Again, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the oiling, lubrication, and or greasing of the bearings in the bait casters because again that's something that's specific to each manufacturer and every one of them is a little bit different but the purpose of this video is just to give you some real quick basic tips um, some maintenance ideas that you may not have thought of to make sure that you extend the life of your fishing equipment all right now let's take a look at some do's and don'ts of tackle storage okay when it comes to tackle make sure that you don't mix and match your soft plastics. Now, when it comes to soft plastics, there's something very, very particular about them, and there's something very, very particular about the brands. And one of the brands that I'm referring to is the Z-Man Elastec technology. Now, this is something that Plano has developed a carrying case for their lures, and the Z-Man Elastec is not something that plays nice with other soft plastics. If you know, you know that Elastec and other soft plastics do not mix. Well, when they do mix, you end up with a big blob of goop. 
So do yourself a favor, either keep them in the original containers or invest in a Plano box like this where you can separate them from your other soft plastics. The other thing to remember is, as I have them here sorted, that you separate your hooks, whoops, don't worry, they survived, that you separate your hooks from your baits because of the fact that the salt within the baits are going to corrode those hooks. That's right, if you leave them on there, it's going to corrode right through and you're going to have a rusted out hook. And that's not just for Z-Man, that's pretty much universal. When you're storing your equipment, make sure that you remove all hooks. Now that includes uh, jigs that you have, in other words, tube jigs with the tubes. Make sure you remove the terminal tackle from the soft plastics because in most cases they will corrode that hook and you'll end up with absolute garbage. And that storage just doesn't go for the off season, it goes for during the fishing season as well. I made a mistake this past season, I used one of these Zoom curly tail grubs on a Ned rig and had it stored with one of my Shiner smaller swim baits. And again, you can kind of see, well, you can see Hank's dog here, for one, but you can see more of Hank's dog here, number two. But most importantly, what you can see is the fact that the color is very similar. They're both kind of a green pumpkin color right now. And uh, that actually wasn't the case for the swim bait. This swim bait was actually kind of a grayish on top with a pearl bottom, almost translucent. And now, as you can see, I have two green pumpkin lures. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, what can happen is you can have a lot of color bleed through the different lures, and it's a good idea to make sure that you don't cross contaminate. Unless you're going for some new color blending, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like I said, that swim bait may actually be fire, which is a good idea. I'm probably gonna test that out in spring and see how I do. The off season is also an excellent time to invest in new fishing lures, in replacing your fishing line, but I'm going to recommend that you don't spool your lines until spring actually comes so that memory isn't held within that reel. And this is where I'm going to tell you when I initially had some reservations regarding the Carl's Club member discount because they stopped some of the huge discount on the Guggen baits, they definitely won me back over on their side with their $1 holiday specials. Now that's going to be coming up next on an unboxing that I'm going to have of all my Shop Carl's goods. But I got to tell you, for $1 for each of these items and free shipping, you just can't beat it. The next video is going to show you exactly how much you can save by having a Carl's Club membership and taking advantage of those $1 specials. I'm still floored at how many things I acquired for $1 a piece. So until next time, be safe, be well, and as always, live to fish. Take care, everybody.